Total Uptime Cloud Load Balancer sits in front of your devices to manage traffic flow regardless of their location in the world. Now before I dive into the panel to show you how to configure it, I want to quickly show you a traffic flow diagram. Let's assume you have a couple of devices at a major cloud provider and another device on-premise. To distribute traffic to these, Total Uptime sits in front of them. Their IP addresses are entered into our panel so we know where to route traffic, and we add a monitor to each of them so we know about their availability. We then choose what ports and protocols we want to allow through so the remainder can be firewalled, and then we publish it to the internet on a Total Uptime Cloud IP. Now we can configure DNS to use the Cloud IP, and all user traffic is now naturally drawn into the nearest Total Uptime Point of Presence. Because we know the status of all the devices, we can route traffic accordingly based on availability, load balancing rules, and so on. I will now show you how to configure this in our panel. In the networking section, we'll go to the configuration builder and click to add a new pack. We'll give it a name. And once I hit save, you'll notice that it creates a default structure with the default server group. To the right of the default server group, I will click manage and we can add our servers. I'll name the first server New York One and give it an IP address and then save it. And I will now edit this server and then go to the ports and protocols tab to specify what I want to allow through. I'll add HTTP 80 and SSL 443. Everything that we don't add is firewall by default. Now back on the settings tab, I should select a monitor to accurately determine when this device is online. Something as simple as a ping check or even a TCP port check is a good idea. You can also create your own custom monitors in the monitor tab. But because this device is just for my demo, I won't enable any monitoring now, so it will be considered online and available. I'll save this server for now, and I'll add a second one. I'll call this one New York 2 and give it an IP address as well. And because I'm adding a second server and both will be active at the same time, I'm now prompted to enable load balancing. I'll give the load balancing configuration a name and choose a load balancing method, of which there are many, as you can see, and a persistence type as well. Now persistence is essentially server stickiness. So if a user reconnects within a certain period of time, we send them back to the same server, unless it's down, of course. Now that the load balancer is configured, the second server has been added to the group. I will edit it as well. Go to the ports and protocols tab and add the two ports here too uh, so we can complete the configuration. Again, I'll leave the monitoring disabled for my demo. Now, before I continue with my configuration, I want to show you how to configure failover. Let's assume you didn't want to distribute traffic between two active servers, but want one to receive traffic all the time and the other only when the primary one goes down. To accomplish that, you would create a failover group here, which I'll do now. And then we simply add the second server here instead. Now, because this is a load balancing demo, I'm going to leave them both active right now. I now need to configure the public facing ports. There are server side ports and public facing ports. I'll add HTTP 80 and SSL 443. And then going back into the default server group, I need to map those ports. Now this is much like a firewall performing NAT or network address translation. You could change them here if you wanted to. For example, I could map my HTTP 80 on the public side to maybe HTTP 8080 on the back end, but I'll leave them the same in my demo. Now that my servers are configured, ports are mapped, I'm ready to publish it. This makes it active on our platform. So back on the main page of my pack, I'll click publish, choose an IP address, and it is queued for deployment. Keep an eye on the banner at the top, which will let you know when it's done. And then you're ready to start testing. You can either do that by modifying your host file on your local machine or just updating DNS. If you need any further assistance, check out the Total Uptime Knowledge Base, and of course, you can always contact our support team as well.